Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the No Nonsense live stream. I believe we are going. Let's make sure this is live. I think it is. Oh, there we go. What's up? Welcome to the No Nonsense live stream again. The truth about masks. So I had a couple interesting things happen to me uh, in the last week that uh, will shed some light on people in the uh, mask controversy, for lack of a better word, right? So, as you all know, some of you are required to wear them at work, in stores, social distance, all that nonsense, right? Um, you don't have to wear it, by the way. You know, remember, it's always a choice. You can just say no. And you know what happens when you say no? Nothing. Last week, <clears throat> I was at the uh, the local grocery store. It's called Meyer by me. And uh, one of the managers, you know, I walk in. I have a American flag bandana that I just keep around my neck, you know, to put on an appearance. And uh, I never wear it, though. I'm always walking around without it on. But the manager saw me. He came up to me. And he knows my face because I shop here regularly. Like, every person at that store knows me for the years I've been going there. So, oh, it's raining out. That's beautiful. So, <clears throat> he comes out to me and goes, um, you know, we, we can't enforce it, but could you just put it up? And I go, I'm asthmatic, I can't. He goes, no problem, no problem. <laughs> he just walked away. That was the first time. Which is true. Uh, I've had seasonal asthma to the point where this transitions between winter into spring and summer into fall. I used to get really wheezy and have to use an inhaler. So that's true. I wasn't lying. Don't lie, right? The next time was a couple days later, I was at Target and I didn't have it on either. I just decided to and I was checking out at the self-checkout and the young girl who was there was like, there, you need to put your mask up. And I go, can of asthmatic. She didn't say anything. There was a lot of people. It was a busy weekend. And people saw me say it. Nothing happened. No managers. No getting kicked out. It's, and I'll get to why it's important that nothing happens. A couple of days ago, I was in Meyer again. And one of the co-workers there, a uh, nice lady who always uh, talks to me, uh, I actually stopped to talk to her. Again, no mask. She's standing right next to me. Not social distancing, because she knows it's bullshit. And had a conversation with me, because she's not from America. She's from a foreign land. And uh, she grew up in Romania. And if you look into the history of Romania, they, they, they screwed up that country in Eastern Europe um, with a lot of communist stuff, things like that. She knows what this is. She grew up there. She's like, I see what's coming. I see what they're trying to do here. And this is coming from a woman who grew up there. So this is where I'm getting my information from. She knows what the mask wearing and the compliance. She has to do it because of work. But she knows. She knows. It's bullshit. And everybody is in agreement that she works with that it's bullshit. And this gets me to today. So today, I went to Meyer again. And another one of the workers there came up to me. And I was in the self-checkout line. And she goes, I didn't have the mask. I just had my bandana around my neck. Never wear it. She came up to me and goes, how much shit, well, she didn't say shit. She goes, how many people give you a hard time for not wearing a mask? And I go, nobody. She's like, really? I'm like, yeah, no. Uh, out of all the times somebody's ever said anything to me, it was either the manager at the thing, which I told him no, and he was fine. The target uh, young checkout girl, she didn't say anything. She just was like, meh. And then... Um, one gentleman, one time, like about a, like a month and a half, maybe two months ago, I had the bandana on and he just walked past me and he goes, is it too hard to put it up? And I just went, and I kept walking. <laughs> That's it. Uh, other than that, nobody has said anything. Nobody's approached me. Nobody's even, I'm sure there's been thoughts, right? You know, I've always been, what are people thinking? I don't give a shit. But nobody uh, has said anything. And I told that girl, she's like, I'm like, well, how are you doing? She's got two masks on her face, right? And she's like, I have to wear two and it's fucking, I can't breathe. And I get sick. And the other day, they're 95 degrees. And some people at her work, she told me that some people have been sent home 
because they can't work because they're passing out and getting sick from wearing the mask all day. She, she was one of them. And she's like, nobody, nobody here likes it. But of course, because of their job, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to ruffle the feathers a little bit, take it to the next level and challenge it. But you can. I encourage her. I go, you guys can all pull together, sue the shit out of this place because it's not a law. They're literally endangering your life. This is the truth about masks. It's endangering your life. It's, it's, it's reverse. It's not what it is. It's not saving lives, guys. It's not even keeping your fellow humans safe. It's actually endangering the person who is wearing it. I've got multiple sources of people I've talked to. Here's another example. If you guys think it's still a thing. Uh, last week, I was in the ER, Rush Copley in Aurora, talked to the PA there, at, you know, asked her, hey, so what's, uh, what's going on with the C word? And she says, well, I haven't seen anybody in seven weeks. We used to have a ward on a different floor, but hasn't seen anybody six, seven weeks, and that was a week ago, so that means it's eight weeks. But she said in March and April, yeah, they had a lot of people. And then come summertime, it wasn't anybody. So that was a, a PA in the ER at a very big hospital, by the way. Aurora is a very big town. You guys all know that if you live in Illinois. Second biggest uh, town in Illinois. That's coming from an ER doctor. So they're not treating anybody for at least two months. You're still wearing a mask. Ask yourself why you're doing that. Ask yourself, honestly. Nothing happened when I didn't wear one at the store. I still got served. They let me in. Nobody was fighting the GM at the store. But you never know that based on the news. I know. Yeah, the news tells you you, you have to comply. Look, legally, folks, legally, nobody, especially at your job, know this for a fact. They cannot make you wear that. You're covering your airwaves. This is now becoming serious. Meyer checkout girl told me she got sick along with other people she worked with just today I found this out you want to know why they tell me that it's because I get to know people and I like knowing people I don't just say hello I, I they know my face I'm that's fine they trust telling me plus I have been coming in without a mask since day one and they all I know the thoughts have probably been there people probably went from their stages of grief anger denial now they just finally come up to you and go, do people give you a lot of shit? So you just have to be the example. If you start doing it, you will encourage and inspire other people to do it. Because at this point, if you still believe that it's doing anything beneficial to anybody, you do this to yourself. Then you can't bitch, moan, and complain. You could have said no to your work. You could have said no. You could have said no. Those people at Meyer can still say no. I told them, like, you can all pool together. Why don't you get a freaking lawyer and sue those people? You can. They'll settle with you real quick. They don't want to lose their whole workforce. Are you kidding? These companies, that's what they do. They're, they, you know, you get, but nobody wants to do that because it's, it's a hassle, right? It's a hassle to uh, go to court and all this stuff. But trust me, you'll win. There was a really big thing. Um, I follow a guy who's taking out Patreon right now. Uh, his name's Owen Benjamin, a, a uh, comedian, and if you don't know who he is, he's been banned from Hollywood, Twitter, all these things, and Patreon fucked him over. He took him to court, and he's winning. And I know people are like, what's this have to do with anything? Because these, uh, I'm going to go into a tangent now, the tech companies <laughs> are um, showing you what you, what they want you to see and are censoring real information to push stuff. And it's all starting to fall, which is beautiful, you know? It's beautiful. Like Ellen DeGeneres getting called out yesterday in, in an article, also uh, Clinton, all these things are starting, truth comes out whether you believe it or not. It will, you can sit there and be like, I'm doing my due diligence by putting on a mask. And it's like, well, you, you could, but you know in your soul, you are lying to yourself the whole time. And um, that's important that these tech companies like um, Patreon are getting nailed right now because it's going to change the game for Facebook, Twitter, all these. They, they, a couple of days ago, 
uh, on the 29th, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, I think Twitter too, they all had to go before Congress to, you know, talk about or why are you censoring information that people can't see? Why did you remove this? It's important, guys. You have to be able to see all sides of information, and it's important to discern it for yourself. You can't just have one thing pumping you full of all the information because guess what? Human beings, guys, have agendas. They like it their way. Think about your own life. You know somebody in your own life, your own family, who always wanted it their way, and then they get it, and you're like, fucking mom, you know, whatever it is, whoever it is, right? This is done on a level that's literally something we all partake in as far as technology, things like that. And these people are trying to make, because they want it their way, and you can't have it that way. That's not how truth works. Truth will come out whether you think it's the truth or not. And it is, and it's fucking wonderful. It makes me smile. Like, it made my day when this uh, young girl came up to me at the grocery store today and was like, she had the balls to come up to me and ask me, like, do you get shit for this? Because she knows it's bullshit. And she's getting physically sick from it. Real people, guys. Not, you know, your Google search uh, or an article from CNN or some other fucking crap. Or uh, real people that I've talked to. Nothing happened from the from the manager at Meyer. Nothing happened from the girl at the checkout at Target. I still got my stuff. I still paid. And I said, have a wonderful day because I was kind and courteous. I wasn't an asshole about it. I, had, I spent 10 minutes talking to um, a lady who grew up in Romania seeing like, oh, I see what this is. This is all about control. It's about control, guys. Compliance with nonsense. Stop. You don't need to wear a mask everywhere you go. You know this. And after five months and uh, an ER doctor telling me that they haven't treated a person in two months should really tell you something. That it's not what it is. And if you still think it is, you did this to yourself. But for the rest of us who were probably just complying, you know, some, some of you guys probably were like, I know it's bullshit, but I'm just, I don't want any trouble. Great. Now you don't even have to do that. Now you can just say it's bullshit and don't wear it at all. Tell your work no. What are they going to do? Fire everybody? Good. Lawsuit them up. This is how this system was designed to be. But nobody knows how it works. And I get that today. I never understood how these things work, but papers and wording of things is very important. And uh, I'm glad I educated myself on a lot of it now because uh, I'm very aware of what it is and how it's used against people who don't know. That's why most people uh, sign away something. Never sign shit, right? Sign away something, then you're fucking liable. And then nah, nah, nah. So if these people at work, like say, take Meyer, for example, didn't sign any waivers, uh, yeah, it's, it's very illegal. But I'm sure they probably were smart and whipped up some kind of paperwork for them. Or not, I don't know. Uh, I do know that uh, nothing happens when you don't wear a mask in a store. As far as if people are worried about getting groceries and all that shit, nothing happens. People might, you know, socially shame you, but fuck them. Who cares? It, you have to do... You got to do what's right in this world, guys. People are actually getting more sick now because of masks. I think the jury's out on that. Okay? And if you still don't believe it now then I don't know what kind of hell you're living in, but I hope you figure it out and get out of it. Honestly, I do. Gotta have compassion for people. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm like, ah, eh, you kind of get what you deserve. But at the same time, it's like, maybe you're just unaware, right? I was unaware in my life before. There was a lot of things in my life where I just didn't know about, didn't understand. And then I was educated on it and then made mistakes and learned and I was like oh fuck it's important to see stuff and make from all angles and make decisions discern information right but when like say like tech companies uh you know just don't let you see that information because they don't want you to see the truth it's like think about this think about the science medical world right we praise fucking modern medicine which has its benefits don't get me wrong but we pedestal it too much when you put it out there like that's the way um, you're setting yourself up for destruction, man. You're putting way too much trust and power into something that you don't know is sh for sure. 
What if a doctor came out and said, hey, I found I can we can cure cancer without that poison, chemotherapy, and all that radiation and shit, and I found a way, and all it takes is better eating habits, right? And there have been doctors who have done that, and they end up dead. Drew. Um, these doctors who claim that, you know, that same doctors grew up in, in the, you know, medical world, took the same oaths or whatever they do, right? Eventually find an alternative way to health uh, that is actually uh, way more effective and you don't want to kill yourself after the treatment. You know, if somebody comes out and says, you know, all you got to do to cure cancer is eat right, do this and that. And it seems too simple, right? But to be honest, it is that simple. But we're told, no, 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 no. That's not what you got to do. That's not what you have to do at all. You need to go inject more poison that makes your hair fall out, lose your mind, and makes you want to die because it makes you feel like shit. That's what's going to kill those cells. I'm sorry, but I don't believe that today. I believe you can literally, you're responsible for your own health. So you can, you have to make the decision to take your health seriously. How do you do that? By taking in information from all angles, trying stuff, trial and error, right? Doing what's best for you. You listen to these people, but these people can't make you do anything. You do it to yourself. You have to consent. Doctors will give you the best information they can based on what you tell them, right? I'm depressed. Here's a pill. I don't want to do that. Eh, go for a walk. You <laughs> know, like... And then people are like, but he's a doctor. He spent so much time. Like, people th put give way too much credit to something that is way, way simpler than they think it is. Which is really just like, eat right, don't lie to yourself, always be honest, uh, get m a little bit of exercise. Don't watch uh, TV and the news. Uh, unplug from all the bullshit news sources. Uh, find some alternative ways to get information to yourself. Uh, dig into history, real history, not just Google search it. That's the other thing, too, that I got into a little squabble with with somebody. It was like, if you just do a simple Google search, it'll tell you that this place is... And I'm just like, what? You literally just take that and go into Google for five seconds and, and just assume that that's the best course of information. Again... Just a couple days ago, Google, Apple, all of them are on are facing Congress for fucking with search results. Meaning they're keeping information from you, from me, from all of us that might be beneficial to all of our lives, our health, our well-being, our minds, all this shit. And people praise it because they're too goddamn lazy and they think that they looked it up on the phone that they know the right answer. It's very funny. Very fascinating. It entertains me. That's why I wore this shirt today. I thought it'd be funny. I used to be a people person, and then people ruined it. Because I just realized how... It's not people are dumb. They're just very unaware. Very, very unaware. And they don't care, which is... It's fine. I understand that now. Like, who who doesn't like their easy life, you know, air conditioning, comfort zone, and just, like, push a button on the phone, and then everything's delivered to you? I understand. It's very convenient. Why would you want to go back to anything else? Why would you want to grow your own food? Why? Well... Because if that stuff ever goes away and you're very dependent on it, what are you going to do then? Imagine, think about the last four and a half months, right? Five months that we've been going through this stuff. How people freaked out just with that little bit of scarcity of grocery stores. Imagine if there was zero shit on the shelf. Where are you going to get your food? You just expect it to be there. You're like, oh, maybe it won't be here for a week, but it'll be here. I'm like, what if it's not? And when you detach yourself from these external things like being able to go to the grocery store and buy food or you could just choose the alternative, which is like grow food yourself, or at least, you know, try. Hell, I, I plucked some of my tomatoes the other day. It's great. I got actual tomatoes. I got garlic, some herbs coming up. I trimmed some rosemary. It's not as hard as you think. I used to think it was all this fucking work. And granted, it's work. But it's not, it's not the kind, it's not impossible like, keep shit watered, put it in the soil, make sure animals don't get it. That's not that hard. It's very simple. It's a simple, simple, simple thing. But uh, we like to complicate things, you know, like science. <laughs> yeah. Um, when new information... That's the thing about science that people, I think, have forgotten in time. is like when new information presents itself that either... 
uh, challenges a concept, an idea, or a theory, it's supposed to be reviewed. Like, that's the whole point. Like, scientific, it's supposed to be ongoing. You know, that's why everything remains in theory mode, because it's not proven yet. It's a theory. I could come up with a thousand theories of my own, but they're not proven. They're just ideas, right? Same thing with a lot of science. It's still in theory mode. It's all. It's not all factual law. People forget that, too. It's okay. I have compassion for people. I grew up in the system. It was funny. But thank God, though, I was thinking about this today. My elementary school had, like, the last bastion of, like, old school teachers. You remember that you see in, like, cartoons, they do this a lot, like, it's an old lady with a long skirt, like a bun in her hair? I literally had that for my first grade teacher. Her name was Miss Deal. She had been doing that shit for, like, 50 years prior to that. And, I mean, this is, like, the late 80s, so, I mean, she, you know, she'd been teaching since, like, before the world got screwed. We need teachers like that. And then what do you think about the education system today that's going to be gone, which is gone, by the way. It's over. Public education's done, guys. Got to go back to either teaching your kids something or find a new way to do something. I don't know what that is yet, but it ain't going to be uh, just shoveling them off K through 12. That's over, man. It's done. You had young kids fresh out of college, 21, 22, teaching the other kids that are just, you know, they're barely kids, like not children themselves. Excuse me. And then now they're teaching other kids. Ridiculous. So what are you going to do about public education, right? Uh, fuck. So it, it's not coming back. We get, so your kids going to stay at home remote learn the whole time? If that's the case, then just turn off the computer and get some books. And you teacher. This is my suggestion. Teachers, if you're a teacher and you're a public education, you're worried about this, you all got the material, right? Why don't you band together, homeschool, and start your own little group and follow your teachings and just do it. Get individual pay and have people pay you as you go. Get your own group. Make it at your house. Have 10 kids in your house. Do something. It doesn't have to be in that brick and mortar building. Oh, because I don't have insurance. It's like, dude, fuck. There are ways around it. The only reason you don't think there are ways around it because you haven't thought of any new ways because that way was already there. So now that it's not there anymore, you're like, what the fuck are we going to do? Right? There's other ways. Some of you teachers are probably really wonderful. Come together. You could still teach. It just doesn't have to be in that school. All right? So do it. Or not. But there's alternatives. The Amish have an alternative to life. I love... I've been referring to the Amish a lot lately. Because if you really just step back objectively, look at the Amish. Nothing's happened to them, right? People think they're crazy. Like, well, you... They got a horse and buggy and they got building barns. That's because they follow their belief system to the letter, which I respect, which is more than I can say for most people in America. Not all. Some people are. I'm saying like generally speaking, a lot of people do not live the way they say they are. The Amish do though. You know, no electricity, wood fires, uh, building great uh, wood it's furniture shit like that being with your hands farming that's an all they don't believe in modern medicine right someone gets sick they just go eh, pray and hope he's okay people think that's retarded but in all honesty i respect it because it works for them they're not dead if they were completely wrong think about this just step back whatever you know if they were wrong why are they not all dead if their way of life was so primitive and so outdated, right? Why aren't they dead? Why aren't they uh, getting wiped out by the C word, the Karumi? Because they believe other things that you don't, which seem to work just fine. Them living off the land, them believing in their faith, God, their beliefs, it's helped them get through and nothing changes for them because they don't need to change. That's the thing about change that I never understood. People are like, things change. I'm like, no, they don't. The more things change, the more they stay the same. There's nothing new under the sun. This world has always been this way. Society might change. Maybe we get a new thing here, a new thing there. We went from VHS to DVD, television to flat screen TVs. Now we're going to have some AI chip implanted in my brain. Yeah, 
You first. <laughs> I'm good. I like being uh, human, even though it's uh, sometimes rough and suffering, but I wouldn't have it any other way. So you have to come up with an alternative, right? You know, back to the truth about masks. They don't work. Nothing happens if you say no at the grocery store. You don't need to be scared. You don't. You could stop looking like a fool. You're only shaming yourself by wearing that. You don't. You don't have to be afraid. Take it off. Maybe your family gets mad at you. Maybe you have a friend call you an idiot. Suck it up. Take a few punches to the gut. It's worth it. It's worth it in the long run to speak truth. But when you don't and you lie and you give in because you're scared and you don't want confrontation or uh, all I want to do, don't lie to yourself because you will suffer for it in the long run. And I think a lot of people are starting to realize that now. So snap out of it. It's okay. You'll be okay. Nothing happens. Nothing. It protects it. But what about fit and saliva? Viruses are not the same as what you think. Pathogens and bacteria, see, they, they warp your mind with shit, and then you already believe it. This is why it's a slow burn with people who slowly become aware of stuff, and they have to go, I've, I've referred to this before, like, you literally have to go in levels, man. You have to start, you gotta start low and just build your way up, because you cannot go to, like, level 10 shit on day one. You'll, you'll fucking blow your brains out. You have to start with level one. <laughs> and when you speak level 10 shit, people don't get it until later. It's like right now, the shit I've been saying for months, a lot of people are all of a sudden are looking at it like, oh, oh, he's not crazy. I'm like, oh, because I, I'm very self-aware of my own shit. If you're self-aware of your own actions and behaviors, you can see through bullshit a mile away. You don't have to comply with this. You don't have to worry about your job. Dude, just say no like the dare program but mean it this time <laughs> that's a running joke i've had for a little bit but honestly you, you just don't nothing happens you'll be able to get groceries try to find an alternative this is a time of alternatives guys it's not going back to our oh maybe if i just watch netflix jerk off and <laughs> dude it's over it's fine i you know 10 years ago i would have been like oh my god now it's okay the less dependent you are on external things, the more you will be joyful, you will be calm, you will be collected, you will be content. The more you are dependent on external things, the more you're going to worry, the more you're going to have fear, the more you will have the inability to speak truth and call out shit when you see it. It just is. It is what it is. Like I, can't, I don't know how else to explain it. It's it, just that. Like, if we wiped out society today, like there was no more of any of this, no more internet, right? Nothing. And you just look at world's fine. You know, nature's fine. Nature will keep going. Nothing changes. It's just like our outlook on things change. That's really what it is. But fundamental truth is always there at its core. You know, you can find this in any ancient teachings of ancient Rome or Greece or Chinese philosophy, Eastern philosophies, these things, Christianity, uh, Buddhism, uh, all of it at its core talks about speaking truth, taking care of your neighbor, following an order that isn't you. Because when man gets in the way of himself, we, we fuck it up. Yeah, we fuck it up pretty good. We are not good at... Um, we're, I think human beings really are better in just small groups, right? Think about it. Don't you ever click of friends? You know, that group that you grew up with, and now even though some of you guys might fight every now and then, you're like, man, I still love them. You know? It's like you got that th 20, 30 years knowing each other. And it's like, well, that's my, that's my, that's my tribe, right? I've got that. We've all got that. <clears throat> the human beings develop that bond because as you grow up, I believe that bond is harder to get the older you are. You know, if you had something from childhood to teenage to adult to older, and it's like you, you you continue that on. It's family. That's a that's a connection. That's like loyalty. You know, 
we lack a lot of loyalty today in this society. But the good news is, this whole thing that's been happening in the last four or five months, great. How is it great when people are dying? You haven't accepted your own mortality. You haven't accepted your own mortality yet. You have to accept the things that are inevitable. You're going to die. I say this all the time. You will die. I will die. Not right now, but I will. And because of that, it makes me not worried about the stupid shit that I'm told to worry about. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you should, you should your insurance and everything like that. No, I just don't care. Like, that's not, that's not why I'm here. I'm not here to just worry about those things. And people do. And we were brought up that way, especially in this Western world, to care so much about that stuff. And then I see so many people have heart attacks, fucking mental breakdowns, all this shit. We wonder why. Because we're working hard for the wrong things. We're working too hard for the material world when everything's so easy. So know it's easy and it's time to go back to an alternative, which is like down-to-earth stuff, grow your own food, potentially, um, you know, fucking get married, have a family. It's great. You know, this whole like, yeah, hey, get married, have kids just for the day. No, let's see, that's the material nonsense of it. But in marriage, a connection with two other people and a bond of a family is unbreakable. You know, it's like, I'll do anything for my family. And if you turn your back on your family, and I know, I know there's exceptions. Like some people, maybe they didn't have a type, but everybody's family's fucked up. No matter if you had a perfect childhood or not, or some shit happened. There's fucking, everybody's flawed. Everybody, everybody. I'm flawed. You're flawed. We're all flawed. We have good and evil within us, right? So we all have to make the choice lifestyle choices what do you want to do be the example i've been being the example with the no mass thing because that's what i believe i believe it's nonsense and i stand by that and a lot of people do too but they're afraid of the conflict so you have to be the example i'm willing to take criticism and bullshit and i have and i don't care because it's fucking true you know it's the truth the truth is worth taking criticism and getting punched in the gut for. It is. You know, if you're just doing something so people can like momentarily like you or accept you in that second so you can get a pat on the back or an attaboy, that's the wrong way to do it. You have to be thinking delayed gratification down the road. This isn't for today. This is for the... It is for the future by doing the right thing today and taking those hits. It's worth it, guys. You don't have to wear the mask. You'll be fine. Be the example, especially if you fucking know it's bullshit. Start today. Start right now and say, I'm not doing that. And you know what? All you got to do is be very kind. Don't be a dick. I would have been very polite to all the people in the couple of incidents I had. Nothing happens. Nothing. Nothing. And then those same people who once told you to do that come up to you and go, do you, do you get a lot of flack? For, do, you, do you get a hard, is, do you get, a, are people giving you a hard time for not wearing a mask? Nope. In the, the months it's been, I've only had, uh, like I said, like three incidences and they're not even incidences. Like nothing happens. People just, maybe they'll look at you. Maybe they're thinking about it. So just say no, you're going to be all right. And... Be the example, not the warning. The warning is the people that are like this, 100 years old, wearing a mask. This poor girl at, at the grocery store saying that she's getting sick and other people are getting sent home because they're passing out and it's 100 degrees out. This is common knowledge. It's endangering people's lives. And if a virus doesn't take you out, then you breathing in your own carbon dioxide and poison, because this is you're farting in your face, guys, breathing in and out. Bacteria is getting in there. Eventually, it'll grow. You know nobody's all. You know nobody's washing those masks, right? They're not. They're sweating in it. They've been touching it all day. <coughs> you coughed in it. Germs are everywhere in there. <laughs> Don't be afraid, because there's nothing to fear. Death comes for us all. So live, be joyful. Don't let that misery take you down of the material 
world. I know from my experience, and I just don't care anymore about it. And I have a great time. Be the example in your family, in your life. If, and I'm talking to the men. If there's any left out there, be the fucking example. Do your role. Protect. Lead. Be the example. Because nobody's going to fucking... Nobody's questioning you. And even... You know, oh, well, oh, well, yeah, well, but mess care about other people. Look. There have been tragedies. People die. I'm not dismissing that. I've been to a couple of funerals in the last year unrelated to the C word. It's very tragic. But guess what, guys? Newsflash. It happens to all of us. Whether you do live a healthy, clean life and you live to be 106 or you decide you want to eat McDonald's for the rest of your life and have a heart attack at 37, this it's inevitable. It doesn't have to be this big thing where I need to feel guilty for somebody else's lifestyle choices. It's tragic when people die. I know. You know, in my own life, my grandmother died at age 69. She had emphysema. For the last 16 years of her life, she literally just like suffered. You know, had 10% of her lungs. In the last eight years of her life, she was in and out of the hospital, near calls because of the lack of oxygen. But you know what my grandmother didn't do? She didn't bitch about how she was. She, I never, never, never heard her complain about, woe is me. Oh my God. She lived her life the way she did, but she went out with acceptance. She accepted that she had done that to herself, you know, and was like, but she, she didn't bitch about it. She, she enjoyed her life up until the end, you know, it wasn't the best way to go out in this world. I don't recommend emphysema. And it was tragic and heartbreaking, but in hindsight, since she's been gone for 15 years, I look at it as she lived her life with joy and no regrets. She wasn't scared. She was always honest and very loving. She would accept anybody in the family. That's why she was like the center of our family, like the glue that held everybody together. So when she did die, it really ruffled my family up for quite a few years after that. Nothing was the same for a while, or at least that's why things change, right? Because people will leave your life. Nothing is the same. Things, your dynamics in life change, you know? That's why we're, I'm nostalgic. I used to be really nostalgic about my childhood because it was fucking awesome. We grew up in, I grew up in the 90s and shit. And it was like, yeah, a lot of stuff. But my parents are fond of that too because I think it's because we were kids. We were kids in the 90s. So mom and dad loved it, right? So we have these memories, these ideas of life and how they should be and how they should go forward. But you just have today. You don't know what the future is going to bring. Six months ago, you know, this wasn't a thing. You know that. But you know it's not what it is today. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to lay down? Or are you going to have dignity? Accept your own mortality, folks. The only way to sell this is if you fear death. And don't get me wrong. I don't know. But I know I'm going to die, so I have to accept the inevitable. Whether I do go somewhere else or that's the that's it, I'm not going to do this. Come on. It's awful. That's how you want to spend your life. Be honest with yourself. And don't, you know, empathy is a weapon. You're doing it for other people. That's a lie. It doesn't do anything. Know that now. Know it's bullshit. Know it's bullshit. Stop. At this point, five months in, guys, bullshit. It's been bullshit since day one. Now, I've known people that have had it. I'm like, I'm not saying you can't get sick and die, man. I'm saying, think about people's lifestyle choices first. And I've had some people say, like, well, I knew somebody who was completely just, they were totally healthy, and they, they got sick. I'm like, were they? How do you know? Did you talk to them every day? Were you living with them? Did you see what they did? No. Live in the day. 
say no to the mask, go out in public, you'll be fine. They can't do anything. None of these places... You, you, We've allowed Target Walmart employees to enforce, be the police of mask wearing. Dude, they don't have that power. Nobody does. That's the secret. Now you know the secret, so now don't be afraid to say no. It's going to be okay. Or not. Or you can wear it. I'm going to mock you for it. And, I'm gonna, and you're going to know on the inside you're doing it for the wrong reason. And you look like a fool. And you're not yourself when you put this thing on. That's why Halloween was such a fun time, right? You get to wear costumes and masks and now you become something else. Take off that fucking mask and be who you are. That's the only time I'm going to tell anybody to do anything. Stop it. Stop it lying to yourself. Just be honest. Stop. Don't take yourself too seriously.